Welcome, everybody. We're grateful to have you here for the 2019 Intermountain CFO Summit. My name's Dave Chase. Again, we're very, very grateful to have you here. I'm part of Advanced CFO. Uh, we want to say thank you, one, uh, until you put on an event like this, you have no idea what goes on behind it. it we're exhausted. Uh, we had this great idea to bring finance people together and build a network, teach them, educate them. A lot's been done in the market for developers and other executives, but very little's done for finance people. And so we said, we got to do something about that. And it's exhausting. And I want to really thank really, this group of founding partners is the best way to call them. This is a group of companies that they're not just writing checks. They spent a lot of time helping us put this together. We know them from business. We respect them. We, they're actually helping with time and effort and money, too, to put this thing on. But more than that, they're actually helping us in the office of CFO be better as CFOs. So I encourage you to get to know them and spend some time with them today as well. And, and just tell them thank you, really, because it takes a lot to put something like this on. I wanted to spend just three to f five, six minutes talking about the theme of this year's conference. And it really is about how do we make the, the office of a CFO more transformative? How, what does that really mean? So you'll see some breakouts around that. Hopefully you'll understand more about what that means by the end of today. Uh, but that's where we want to spend just a couple of minutes. And in, as partners at Advanced CFO, we feel our job really is to monitor what's happening out there in the finance space, stay in front of the trends, talk about it, help educate all of us on how to be better senior finance professionals. We came across a study that McKinsey did last year that analyzed, asked questions of hundreds of CFOs and their peers about what their job was like. I want to show you a couple of charts out of that data. This one, I don't expect you to read it all, but this one suggests that in the last two years, the number of functions reporting to the office of CFO has grown from four to six. And most of those increases are coming in areas of, of strategy, you know, dealing with the board, uh, monitoring long-term growth and success. And you'll also note at the bottom, the number of CFOs that are responsible for digital efforts in a business has doubled in that four years, or in those two years. The second chart is a really interesting one to me and a source of endless frustration. Um, what this says is, as CFOs, we think we're adding a lot of value in areas of strategy, holding the organization accountable to metrics and so on and so forth. When our peers are asked the value we bring, they say the traditional stuff. Oh, they're great at accounting. They're great at FP&A. Uh, they're great at cost management. There is a clear difference in the way we're being perceived. And I, you know, I look at that and I just like, ugh, what is it? What, what's happening? What is it about us potentially and our perception and how we're displayed in, among the executive team that continues to create this dynamic? So let me illustrate with an example out of this data. So you notice that the data said in the digital world, CFOs are becoming increasingly responsible for that, doubling. Um, when CFOs are asked, what are, What's causing me or preventing me from being successful in doing that? They, they talk about these three different things. A lack of understanding of what it really means, a lack of resources, even a perceived risk of change. What's it going to do to the organization? I'm a little afraid of that. Um, only 3% of CFOs say, nothing, I can, I can do this. 97% of CFOs say there's seemingly insurmountable challenges for me grabbing that and doing something with it. That's astounding to me. 97% of us are kind of stymied and not knowing how to like, proceed with digital when the boards are asking us to do more and more. I personally think that that's inherent in us sometimes as a, I realize I'm stereotyping like crazy, but the truth is we've earned our stereotypes sometimes. Um, so much so I like to tell this story actually of this, it's a very, it's a lesser known biblical story. CFOs have been acting this way for thousands of years, frankly. Um, I love this artist's rendering of this story that many of you will recognize a little bit of it, but you may not have fully understood the meaning. So there was a chairman of a board who asked his executive team, said, okay, CEO, vice president of marketing, CFO, I want you guys to go out and grow this business for me. So he gave him $50,000, $20,000, $10,000 th respectively. The CEO went out and, and the vice president of marketing went out, took some appropriate risks, came back with a 2x return, everybody cheers and is happy. The CFO depicted in the back there, he, he's safe, right? He wants to bury it back there. He invested in Roman treasuries, right? No return, totally safe. Um, and, and that, you know, we chuckle a little bit, but the reality is it's, it's kind of a painful chuckle because it's real, right? How many of us are a little more conservative than our peers? It is real. And so I wonder what can we really do about that when we're being asked to be champions of growth and of long-term growth? Oh, wrong way. 
Okay, so this might be a little presumptuous, but the seat of the CFO, the office of a CFO, in my view, is one of the best seats in the business. How many other roles in the business can look out, out of that cockpit and see everything that's going on, look at the cockpit itself, and see everything that's going on inside as well? There are a few roles like the office of a CFO, so we're well positioned really to take the leadership reins on certain things. The data in this survey suggests there are three areas that we can, in today's world, that we really can make an impact in. One is becoming stewards of long-term growth. And I would actually change, not really long-term growth, but long-term value creation. We're not responsible for the growth, but we are responsible for helping the organization be accountable to that. Two, building financial capability and thinking to support these growth initiatives. Um, we like to call it uh, building financial literacy or peddling financial literacy in an organization. I'll talk more about that in a moment, too. And then finally, leading this change and charge towards digitization. So let's talk about each of those really, really briefly. So one, balancing short and long-term stewardships. Um, boards are increasingly asking CFOs to do more with monitoring long-term growth. Now the truth is there's a lot going on. That's the same board and investors that are clamoring for short-term performance, and it's really, really tough to focus on the long-term when you're getting that chirped in your ear all the time. But it doesn't absolve us of our responsibility. We still need to be champions of that long-term value creation. Second, peddling financial literacy across the organization. Um, this does not mean teaching everybody in the organization how to read a P&L and a balance sheet. The truth is many CFOs, few CFOs, are actually doing much about teaching the organization how to be financial literate. Most of them are within their circle of control, right? They're teaching and training their finance teams and accounting teams how to be better. But few of them are stepping out of that and training the organization how to think more about ROI. This is, it sounds like a tall order to do, but if we just think about that, how do we teach every organization, whether I'm in a marketing meeting or operations, to just think about the return? And ask that question. What's the ROI of that decision or that investment? Just training people to think like that can have a massive difference in organization. And then finally, leading the change towards digitization. There's a lot of talk about this. This is one that a lot of people are excited to do, and we talked about you know, there's only 3% that are saying they're doing this successfully because of these other barriers. We thought we'd at least talk about what does it really mean to do this, to digitize a business. And there really are four phases of development, to simplify. The first is automation. How do we take the finance function and automate it? How do we, um, how do we automate the transactions so they're more accurate, they're more rapid? How do we move out of an Excel-based system and into an Alterex system? These kind of questions are all about automation and simplification and creating increased accuracy. Secondly is visualization. And most of us know what visualization is. There's dashboarding companies popping up all around us in Utah, uh, big ones that are doing some meaningful things, and it's all valuable. But that's really just taking the current data we've got and showing it to us visually. And we all know and understand the value of that. Analytics is behind that. If, if visualization is showing it, the analytics are creating new ways to think about the data that then we can visualize. So that's really step three. And then finally is this fourth step of integration. It's more than just finance. It's including the CRM. It's including the operations. It's including anything in the ERP. Anywhere there's data in the business, it becomes our responsibility to put our arms around that so the organization can do something and make better decisions as a result. We've long said that's really what a CFO is, putting their arms around everything in a business, all that data, and serving it to the organization so they can make better decisions. Finally, I, when I was first made a CFO uh, 10, 15 years ago, the CEO pulled me aside, recognizing a uh, little bit of the deer in the headlights, the conservatism that I came into the office with, and he challenged me to take more risks. And we talked about this quote, and I, I took it upon myself to emblazon in big, bold letters on the wall of my office this quote by Wayne Gretzky, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Seems simple, but the truth is, it really did change me in the way I thought. It changed the way I thought about decisions in the business, that my stewardship really was around creating long-term value, and not just being the no guy uh, that we so often retreat into. But if we can do that, if we can take more risk as a function and join our peers in taking appropriate risk and then hold the organization accountable to the creating value in the long term, I think we can move business forward and make the office of the CFO really a transitional office, or not transitional, but um, transformative. Transformative, that's what we're really trying to do today. We want to talk more about that today. 
this next panel, I'll let my partner introduce, but they're going to be focused primarily on that, the relationship between CEOs and CFOs, and how does the CFO really help in the business. But I want again to say thank you for coming. We've got a few announcements from Corey on kind of how today works. But again, thank you for being here.